Hello, welcome to Learn Noir in an Afternoon or Get Your Money Back. I'm Jose Pedro Souza. I'm a DevRel engineer at Aztec Labs. And today we're going to be talking about Noir, uh, the ZK DSL developed by Aztec Labs. We're going to be talking a little bit about ZK. Uh, what is ZK? What can you do with ZK? We'll also talk a little bit about Noir. Uh, why are we doing this? Why is Noir needed? Why, what can you do with Noir that you can't do with other ZK DSLs? Then we're going to present our project, our little project for today. And finally, we're going to hack it and yeah, just start hacking stuff. So we know that zero knowledge proofs are really powerful. You can do stuff that you can do, uh, you can't do with any other um, tech, basically. But usually, with great power, come uh, univariate polynomial commitments, and this is kind of the problem because if you don't get the math behind zk, usually you're just left in the dark. And and basically, the purpose of noir is to make this go away and just abstract all the complexities from the mathematical part of the ZK space. So we need this usable universal ZK domain specific language. Um, and yeah, we like Rust, Rust is cool. Uh, so yeah, we just went and copied the syntax from Rust. And so if you try to find the difference between the two programs, they're yeah, they're usually you're gonna have a very bad time. And so this is just an example. If you try to spot the difference between these two um, snippets, yeah, you're not gonna find them. One of them is Rust, the other one is Noir. And as you can see, there are little differences. In this case, there are zero differences. We want you to write code instead of writing circuits. So if, you, if you've used other GK DSLs in the past, maybe you've written like circuits on, on a piece of paper and then connect the wires and that's basically how you write the circuit. We, we believe that the best paradigm is the one that we are used to, which is just writing code, like just writing actual programs, like, like you'd write Solidity or JavaScript or, or Rust. And this also allows you, like, for very, um, very experienced developers to just use Noir to abstract their own stuff. So maybe they just want a very easy way to use ECDSA signature verification, for example. So maybe they don't want to uh, write their own stuff and just use Noir, like Noir modules or external libraries. Uh, well, this is still easy for beginners to start using ZK. So today we're going to be building a little project. I'm going to show you next what it is. And we're going to divide this in like three chapters. The first one is literally about Noir and especially Nargo and Noirup. How can you simply get started with a new Noir project? We're going to be talking about the syntax of Noir. I'm going to be writing tests. Uh, actually, they are built in with Nargo, but I'm going to show you how to make them fail and stuff. And, and finally, what we all care about, which is proofs, actually generating the proofs and verify them. Uh, we're going to also be integrating some libraries, um, namely the standard, li standard library uh, that you will find many of the built-ins in, in Noir and other libraries like external libraries built by the, by the community or libraries that you want to build yourself. And finally, uh, we're going to be looking at the browser usage. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a beta, but you can still you can still do it and you can use it in, in your dad and I'm going to show you how. Uh, we're going to be leaving behind the verification of proofs on chain. I'm going to show you basically how to generate the contract, but from then on, I'm I'm assuming that you know how to deploy a contract with Foundry or, or Harhat or well, Truffle is not around anymore, unfortunately. So 
that's it. Um, I'm just rambling here, so it should get started finally. Yeah, you should check out uh, the workshop resources as well. Um, especially the workshop resources, you're gonna have a repo there with the stuff that we're gonna be using for today. So I highly recommend you to, to scan this QR code. Um, also the Noir docs, uh, this is basically the documentation that the Noir team has been putting putting on uh, and it should give you most of the answers you're looking for. Uh, and finally, my my link tree, it's not link trees, I think it's a limbo, yeah. It's a limbo thing. You can you can check out their, all my, my Twitter handle and, and Telegram and stuff. So you, you can talk with me and ask questions if you, if you want to. And so that's it. Let's let's start hacking basically. So I'm gonna pull up my uh, VS Code uh, editor here. Uh, as you can see, this is already in the in the workshop resources I just um, mentioned to you. And if you check out the README, you're gonna find uh, this Noir app tool. Um, so Noir app is if you're used to CLI tools like uh, Rust app or Foundry app. Uh, which is actually here. It's basically a CLI tool that we install, uh, will install in Argo. And if you're used to Rust, you also know Cargo, um, which is kind of an NPM thing that will install like a package. It's a, a version manager, a package manager, and also runner and run scripts and stuff. So that's basically what Nargo does. So to install Noir app, you just go and install it. Like it, you can just copy this, you can trust me, bro, and just just copy this thing, it will install Noir app for you. This can take a little bit longer for you, so just pause the video and wait for it to, to complete. And yeah, it says that you should just uh, run source, like, and just source the the, the bash file, uh, or just start a new terminal session. And then finally, you should have Noir app uh, around, and you can check what exactly what does it do, what does it do, and you're gonna get like the options for it. And so it's pretty powerful. You can install like specific versions and branches, PRs, commits, and stuff. Uh, in this case, I will, even though I think the latest version of Nargo is 0 0.10, uh, let's just go ahead and install like a specific version for that. And uh, so I'm gonna install like version uh, 0 0.11. Um, so let's, you just go and install that and it will download and install for you. I guess that's the one I had already because it was really fast. And then you can just go and run Nargo version. And finally, you should have here your uh, version. Another thing that you could probably find useful is the VS Code plugin. So if you use VS Code, you can just go here on extensions and basically say just can uh, Noir, uh, write Noir. And you're going to get, uh, yeah, here Noir language support. So yeah, this is it's a very uh, alpha version, but it's really cool and it can run like it has some code lines that can be useful for you to run. Uh, you also get like syntax highlighting, which is which is always cool. So with Nargo, you can basically do all kinds of really cool stuff like running your code and installing package and starting a new project. And that's basically what we're going to be doing. Uh, so you go, you can let's just go run Nargo help to see what can we do with Nargo? Uh, in this case, we're gonna just use the new command and just call it like Noir project. And yeah, it will generate a new project here. And you have two files basically. Nargo.toml is basically the source of your project. Uh, you can define whether it's a library or a binary. So yeah, also define dependencies and workspaces here. Uh, for now, we're just gonna leave it as it is. Don't change it. Also. Noir generates um, a main uh, main dot noir file for you, which basically has a very basic circuit you can you can test and run and, and do whatever you want, um, and so yeah, let's just go over it and see how how can you run your own. Um, so let's start with the fn syntax, which is means function basically, and you need to have a main function. Uh, that's part of it because you're running the main. Uh, the main file. If you have other files, yeah, you can have like modules and stuff. You can look at it in the documentation. And you also need to define like the name of your inputs um, and also their type. 
um, and you also need to define whether they are public or private. So we think that private privacy is normal, so you only need to define the stuff that you want to make public. Uh, and so the biggest difference is that obviously if you have something that is public, you gotta assume that the verifier has that in their possession. Uh, while for private, it's stuff that it's only on your machine that you don't want to reveal, but you still have, want to prove some calculations on it. Uh, in this case, we're going to use the field type, which is uh, basically um, an element of a, of a finite field. Um, and so you can treat it pretty much as a kind of a big integer and make all kinds of really cool, um, really cool operations, arithmetic operations on that. And that's basically what, what field is uh, for practical uh, purposes. Uh, if you want to define an array, for example, then you just do it just like in Rust. You define the type and then you find the, how, many, how many elements does your array have. One thing that you, just, you should notice is that you need to know this at compile time. Uh, there was no way of just passing like a slice. Uh, this doesn't work uh, with basically any of the ZK languages I'm, I've ever worked with. So yeah, this is not new. Another thing you can use is like some really cool return values. So you can have like public field and make this return a field. And so you can have like, for example, let Z and say X plus Y, and then just uh, assert like X is different from Y and then just on Z. And, and yeah, this, this will return you a field. And some people ask you, ask me like why why should I have like public public outputs for for uh, yeah for return values uh, you know why 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 do they have to be public um, and the reason is like basically the way it's it's treating the return value it actually as a as an output as an input so this would be just the same as like returning a, um, something like this public field and then just constraining at the end so as you probably noticed, I already used some arithmetic on it. Uh, you can, yeah, you can you can sum them up. You can you, you can subtract them. You can do all kinds of really cool stuff. And if you want to know exactly what can you can do with fields, uh, you can actually just check the the noir docs. Uh, I'm gonna do that for you. Just here are the noir docs. You can go here like on. Um, the language concepts and see uh, all the things you can do like logical operations and just send them and even like if bit shift and stuff as long as they are integers um, and yeah so this list will hopefully give you some examples as well you can you can skim through if you're interested also the shorthand operators which are really really useful at times you can also use uh, loops and control flow stuff like ifs and else and stuff. Um, so basically the way you write them, it's just uh, just like in Rust, you'd say like for, uh, for, for I in some kind of range, you, you say, oh, thanks, thanks GitHub Copilot. Uh, it already knew some example for you. Yeah, you can run like your full loops, for loop just like this. Um, and you can also do it like a conditional. So you can say if if x is not one or if it is one, then then y is something like this. So yeah, you can run you can run um, if else is uh, just like you do with with rest. There's also the assert keyword that you probably saw at the beginning, um, and that you're gonna say assert uh, x is different from y. Um, so this is something that you don't get in Rust. So yeah, if you try to run this, it will say, it will complain that it doesn't know what, what assert is. And this is basically what you want your program to do, basically. I want this proof to, to generate some constraint and say that this proof will only be valid if X is different from Y, and I don't want to reveal what X is. And, and so that's, that's what assert keyword does. Another really cool thing that you can do is structs. So yeah, you can define like a new structs and say a struct person, for example, and just have some stuff like, uh, not strings. Uh, we have strings, but yeah, they, they are, yeah, let's not, not use them, not today. Um, 
So you can define structs and just pass them like you can, can pass that here x could be a person for example with, with x and x age etc. So for our project let's imagine that you are the owner of a fight club. So you're gonna say that each fighter is a person um, and that person has, has an age which is gonna be a field for example and you want to check that only people with a certain above a certain age are allowed into your fight club you also want to check for example that they know like the password uh, to enter your fight club there's a secret password that you don't want to bounce it to know what it is uh, and so let's let's just go through it and say yeah there's there's a person uh, this is going to be a fighter um, that has a certain age um, and then you're gonna have like for example a password and obviously a password is a private input so let's not reveal it uh, but the hash of the password that's definitely something that can be known because it's very difficult to figure it out and so let's just get like password hash password hash is gonna be a public input and let's say it's gonna be also gonna be a, a field and so in in your program uh, all you want to do it's basically uh, two things one is just like check if age is bigger than minimum age um, and the second thing is like you want to check if the password hash is equal to the hash of the password so yeah github uh, copilot already know how to do it um, yeah let's just see how can you use this hash thing uh, another thing that can be useful in this case for example is global so you can go and say global uh, and say um, global minimum age is going to be a field and let's say it's 18 because I'm in Europe. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it would be different in any other country. And um, I just get some get ourselves some space here. Um, and so yeah, let's let's just go and you can literally write two lines of code and see a fighter age of the fighter needs to be higher than the minimum age. Um, this takes care of your first assertion. Um, and I can I can just go and test it already. I can I can go and say um, let p uh, is a person uh, with age for example age 19. And so I can say 19 19 is here. I'm gonna just pass whatever random values for the other two. Um, yeah, and and see and see this should pass. I'm gonna go and run an Argo test. Uh, Okay, oh, sorry, I need to CD into that in our project. And then go and Nargo, Nargo test. Um, oh, wait, sorry, sorry, I forgot. Uh, it's P. Um, yeah, it, it will complain that fields can be compared. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's something that's true, you can, can compare fields. So let's just cast them as you wait. Um, and so actually make this already anyway, so it's easier. And um, yeah, this will hopefully pass them. Another really cool thing you can do with Nargo, at least the latest versions, is to, is to write in test that shoot file. And this can be useful, very useful, I guess. Uh, and just go and call uh, test that shoot file. And then you can run and test that should fail. Um, let's just go. I hope GitHub. Okay, yeah, that's he knows already. He knows. So yeah, you can you can go and run Argo test, and this should pass because this test should fail. Regarding the password, so we have our password, and we know that the verifier know what knows what the password hash is. So that means in our circuit we need to hash our password and just check if the provided if the hash that everyone knows is equal to the hash that we are calculating in our own private input. So basically we are saying the hash of the input that only I know is equal to the hash that everyone knows because it's like in a smart contract or just everyone knows for some, some other reason. Um, and how can we do that? We basically do that with the standard library so you can the way you import it, it's very easy because uh, you can just um, you can just import it like like this. It's it's just a standard library, so just dependency standard library. I don't know, you don't even need to add anything to Nargo.saml. It will work out of the box. Um, let's just go on on the browser to see basically 
um, what do you have there? And you have a world chapter for our standard library. And this, you have like really cool things like recursive proofs and Merkle trees and, and stuff. And also all the cryptographic primitives that we currently support. As for the hash, for the hash methods, uh, you have many hashes that we have implemented already. Some of them are what we call black box function. And this basically means that this is just provided by the backends. So if you use different backends, you may have, um, they may not be implemented. If you're looking for a hash method to use, I would recommend it to use some very, some ZK friendly uh, hash. Uh, that would be, for example, Pedersen or Poseidon. Let's just go on Poseidon because I like it. And, and yeah, the way you import it, it's just like this. So I'm, I'm actually going to copy this so you can see it um, and go over on my VS Code window as well. Uh, and just, just place it here so I don't forget how to use it. And so the way you import it is um, you have STD. So you can actually go here and, and import it here. And so you can have more granularity on what exactly you are you trying to import, and and say uh, let, let's just just let's just leave it at this as this is, and so this way you can you can have your program be a little bit less verbose and just have the module you're you're importing specifically, uh, and so in this case uh, we want to check like you want to, uh, yeah it's not really that as GitHub says so you can have. You just want to check that your password hash is equal to the hash um, that you're trying to to do. In this case, you just go and run the password. And the reason GitHub thought I was trying to pass um, an array is because yeah, password should be an array. So it was kind of right. Um, so yeah, in this case, as as I told you, you, you need to know the size uh, at compile time. So yeah, I'm hashing two values, so I'm passing the hash two, so it would be three or four or five or whatever, depending on what exactly are you trying to, to hash. Um, it says that's not being used, which is which is a lie. Okay, you know, now, it's, now it's okay. And yeah, that's it. Now for, for testing, basically, it will complain that, yeah, it expects a field two, which is kind of true. Um, and so here's what the utils uh, folder can be useful. Uh, because you do have like an implementation of Poseidon that you can actually run on your machine and see how how does a hash look like. Um, so you just go here, you just change your inputs and then get run this like with TS node, uh, for example, and, and you're going to get an output. So in this case, um, I think I already have two values here. Um, that can be used like for, for Poseidon. So if you have like one, two, for example, uh, the hash of that should be this. So yeah, in this case, I'm gonna just paste and say, yeah, the password is one, two, which is a very weird password, but yeah, let's let's forget about it. And just say the password hash is, is this one. And while we're while we're here, let's just go and do the same for, for the test that should fail. So I'm gonna just change and just change this eight for a B. And this hopefully should pass like both tests. Um, let's go and try. Yeah, as you see, they all pass. This one passes because the value is correct. This one passes because the value is incorrect. If you've seen the utils folder, you also have another one called Kachak, which is basically uh, the same thing, but for but using Kachak, um, which is, uh, yeah, which is a hash function that it's widely used in, in Ethereum, but it's not very ZK friendly. So one thing that you want to do basically is to prove stuff and that's all fine to run tests, uh, but they're just, they are just tests. You actually want to prove and the verification stuff. So the way you do it is just run, run Argo check and you have this prover and verifier files. And yeah, this is basically where you put your values and to be proved be proven so in this case like we know what they are already so I'm gonna just go and put like my my password here um, just here and my password hash 
uh, in quotes um, inside quotes here and my and the age of my fighter is going to be 19 so you want proof on this and because this is noir it's as easy as just running navigo proof you're going to see here like the proof you there's the, it's, it has the name of the project and yeah, it's very difficult to understand but it's, as you can see it's kind of succinct which is what we want in the end it's a snark right it's a, it's it's supposed to be succinct if you want to verify that you just do the same thing you just go now we'll verify and you're going to verify the, the default proof that's going to be in this directory with the name of the project at this point you're probably asking how can i do that in in a smart contract um and as always it's pretty easy you just go and run argo code the gen verifier and it can take a little bit but it will it will generate a smart contract for you um well, it was fast actually this time so you have a smart contract here uh which was written by very very smart people um and yeah it's gonna be a little bit difficult to understand all of this but yeah this is a smart contract you can deploy uh, the relevant function here is probably the verify function and this is basically what what does it expect to be passed on at this point you may want to explore a little bit more about the standard library and you'll probably notice that yeah, it doesn't do everything you want and that's that's okay uh, we want we expect that and so uh, there's a very easy way to just import other libraries uh, one of my favorite libraries is the EC Recover library, um, and this is by uh, one of our community members called Colin. And Colin just put the, um, the this library to um, basically recover an address from um, a signature. How how can you use that? So let's go back to VS Code and just go on the Nargo.toml. And here you have dependencies here. Um, and actually there's a, there's here, yeah, uh, just an example of how can you use EC Recover, uh, which is like this, you go hey, EC Recover, you, you check the tag, and then if you want to import it, uh, it's, it's very easy. You go here and you just import it, uh, just use dep uh, EC Recover, and there you have it. So as promised, um, I'll show you how to use this in, in the browser. So the way you can do that, uh, let's just, we don't, we're not going to use Nargo anymore, I believe. So let's just, just close this and just leave the, the circuit here. Um, and basically you, the way you do it is um, with three packages. So when, as, as, I've, as I've explained before, there is Noir. And that's basically the language that you're writing and that compiles into ACR, which is the intermediate representation. And then we have two more packages, which is the ACVM that will translate that into a constraint system. And then finally, your actual backend. And so the way you use it on the browser, it's just importing these three packages separately. Um, so here in, the, in our project folder, you have the browser browser package. Uh, sorry, a browser folder, and this is a basic React uh, page. If you see here, like my component, it will. I'm gonna input some numbers, um, x and y. I want to check if that x and y are different, kind of the other circuit that we know already. And then once the user clicks calculate proof, it will calculate the proof, and so yeah, it will generate the witness and generate the proof. So the witness is like this ACVM part. And then from there with the witness, you can generate your proof. So we have here the class Noir, and you, you are initializing as Noir, new Noir. Um, and so, yeah, let's let's get started. I'm not gonna write the whole thing, but there is a, a sheet um, file here. You can, you can just go and copy line by line and just check and see uh, what exactly does it do. We're going to import um, our actual backend, which is browser. Then finally, we're going to have um, we're going to have also the init ACVM. This is needed only for the browser uh, that you need to init the ACVM. It's going to be doing some awesome stuff in the background. 
um, and then finally execution of the circuit and, and the compress witness uh, if you need to compress it and we're going to do that, we're going to need that. You probably noticed that uh, there isn't any uh, JSON file in our project and that's because I just forgot to compile the circuit. Um, yeah, basically that's what we're going to do. So we are in that folder already, so I'm just going to go and run Nargo compile and it will compile my circuit into the target folder. Then we are finally, like the big stuff, we are initializing Baratzenberg with four threads. So you can actually make this six or eight or whatever. Um, yeah, just basically there's multi-thread support in Baratzenberg and that's why it's actually so fast. Um, we're also getting like the circuit size because we need to allocate some memory uh, for for our wasm uh, stuff so this is basically what it's doing and finally we are just storing the uh, ACO composer which is a um, very handy interface to to uh, generate your proofs as for the proof generation I'm just gonna go back to my cheats um, file and just copy this just last two things and yeah while we're here also copy the destroy um, method and let's just go over them um, yeah this is this is actually the easiest part uh, easiest part so if you have the witness already you just call uh, AC create proof from your initialized API so if you remember this API comes from the Brasenberg and so you've done a bunch of things to Brasenberg to make it ready so then it's just easy to go and call AC create proof and you, you need to pass your AC composer and the buffer uncompressed and and yeah, you need to decompress your witness because it comes out of a CVM uh, decompressed. Um, and this false, you can just ignore it. It's uh, meant to be used for recursive proofs. Um, so we are actually also abstracting this away from you. And finally, you should have your proof here. Um, yeah, this should uh, output your, your proof. As for the verify proof, it's kind of the same thing. And then yeah, you you have like the the verify proof, actual verify proof with the ACU composer and the proof and that flag that you can ignore regarding recursive proofs. And this is how we do uh, how we, you would do that in um, in in the browser or basically uh, also in in Node.js. So I'm gonna show you in the raster we have some examples. Um, one of them is the next hard hat, which is basically our project, but in a, a it's uh, ready to use. Um, so you can you can see like the utils it also integrates ether, so you, it already verifies on chain your proof as well. Um, and yeah, that's it. There's a circuit. Circuit is again very very easy circuit. You can you can see it. It's just really really basic. So yeah, it's. As you see, this is initializing the noir uh, like that init function, and I'm passing just like two different values, and yeah, you see, this is really really fast. That you calculated your witness, your proof, verified it, and then verified on chain, and this is it for morning and afternoon. Uh, I hope this is was useful. Um, just let us know if you have any questions. If you want to do something uh, more difficult and you're gonna you're having trouble. Uh, just reach out. There's the Noir Discord you should join. Um, and also, yeah, you can just get in touch with us on Telegram or Twitter or by any other means. Thank you.